bring Taylor McCarthy to the the stage. What's up, Taylor McCarthy? Everyone, uh, bring out, get off, get off mute, and let's uh, let's welcome Taylor McCarthy with a boom. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. You guys hey, excited man. to be here? Or what? Yes, dude. Every every time, man. Every time. Hey, yes. we're gonna bring the energy, but we're gonna be bringing the nuggets, the aha moments, left and right. You know, I see a lot of familiar faces. I lot, see a lot of new faces, um, but I'm bringing you guys some brand new information today um, that even if you've trained with me in the past, you guys have never heard this stuff because there are secrets in sales. There are shortcuts. And I'm going to go over the aha moments with you, the actual how to's behind sales, not theory, but things that have actually been tested and proven. And we each have a challenge today. The challenge that I have is to give you these aha moments. And the challenge that you have is to actually program the information into the most powerful computer that there is. And that's your mind. So get ready to tap in today because you're going to hear a lot of nuggets. And the idea is you're going to start thinking a lot differently. That's the goal of the way that I train. Oh, wow. I've never thought about it that way. That does make sense. Well, that's a better way to handle this objection. Well, I've never actually positioned the value that way. You know, a lot of people like think that when I go through a sales process, oh, that was a laydown. Well, it's because we set it up to be a laydown. If your tactics are sound, they cannot fight you. So how many of you guys like, is the majority of everybody in solar here? Or are you guys in all different sorts of industries? 99%. Solar. Great. So we're going to teach you about sales today, but I want to first reprogram your mind because- when anybody thinks of a salesperson, 96% of people do not like salespeople. If I was to ask the normal person, what do you think of a salesperson? They're going to think, oh, the salesperson, they're, they're out to get you high pressure, this, that, that. If I ask you what a salesperson is, you're thinking, hey, I'm helping people. I'm putting people into better positions. See, the thing is, we should have never been called salespeople. We should have been called servants. The reason being is because we are in the business of serving and helping others. So today's training, I'm going to be going over a lot of the nitty gritty, and then I want to open it up to specific questions. You know, there's specific one-liners that I've added into the presentation. You know, I'm going to give you one right off the bat that works every single time. By a show of hands, how many of you guys knock on doors and they say the first thing they say, is this solar? You guys get that? Is this solar? Right. So I pretty, much, I pretty much think I figured out the best way to handle is this solar. And it literally is just a smoke screen at the bat. But what I say to people, and it's literally 100 percent of the time I get through that like easy now, is this solar? So it used to be about solar. Now it's just whether or not you were paid properly. You know how you have Edison? Boom. And I'm moving right forward past that. A lot of the time you get hung up, oh, it is or it isn't. And, you know, you're not an order taker. You see, there's all these levels of a sales professional and they refer to the top sales professional as a stone cold trapper. The stone cold trapper is the top of the food chain. It's the guy that doubles up on everybody else's sales. You have the master closer. You've got the closer. You've got the dealsman. You've got the salesman. You've got the order taker, which I always thought was the lowest level of a sales professional. But back in the day, in the 1930s and 40s, they used to call the lowest level of a sales professional a tour guide, right? They're just going out there, walking around the neighborhood, but they're not making any plays. So what I really want to teach you guys today is a lot of the how-tos. So I'm combining three different keynotes, specific parts to show you really my best stuff today and to really break it down to the ridiculous. So a lot of you guys want to get better. How do you do that? Practice. Practice does not make perfect. Only perfect practice makes perfect. I challenge all of you guys to start recording yourself on the doors, whether it's video or audio, actually analyzing yourself. It's the same way that if a football quarterback threw four interceptions and he doesn't watch film, he's probably going to throw another four picks the next game. But if he's like, dude, I got to watch out for the safety, you're starting to analyze. That's one of the best ways that I could teach you to get better at sales. Ever since I started to record my sales process, I always part like pick it apart and wow, I, I got to stop using the word payment and I need to replace it with amount. 
you know, I need to actually transition a little more here. There's so many times where I listen to my process and some people believe in one touch. Some people believe in two touch. Some people believe in three touch. I believe in taking the sales process as far as you can every single time. And I realized that after listening to a recording where I was like, yeah, I'll come back on Monday. And I could have easily said, hey, if there's a small corner of a table, the design's about 92% of the way complete. All I really need to do is text my lead engineer here. I'll text him right now. If I can just put my stuff down, I'll show you two things, where the panels would go on the roof and what your bill would have been last month. Taking the sales presentation as far as you possibly can. So practice is what's going to lead to certainty. That's probably one of my biggest nuggets I'll share with you right now. Every single time, even when I was a golf caddy at 16 years old and I went to a caddy orientation, I had something called absolute certainty. I knew that I was going to be the best caddy at the golf course. I knew that I was going to be the best caddy out of the entire group. Every time I got into a competition, I worked at a company called Platinum Protection in 2011. I walked into a room with long hair. I had an old station wagon. These kids had BMWs and suits. But I had an absolute certainty, even though I was a rookie, that I was going to smash all these guys. I knew it. I believed it. I could see it. I visualized what I wanted. And then I started to verbalize it. And some people might think you're crazy if you're verbalizing things. But the first person that has to believe in yourself is yourself. So the practice is going to lead to your certainty. The certainty is going to lead to you having confidence. The confidence will lead to you getting the results. The results really leads to growth. And the growth leads to who you become. There is no neutral in the sales process. You get better or worse. Your life is like a stop. Every single day, you're either moving in the direction you want to go or moving away from the direction that you want to go. If you compound work and effort and input, that's how you're going to get the results. You see, I do not tie my success to the number. I tie my success to the effort and input that I put in on a daily basis. I joke around and say, hey, maybe it's because I'm Irish and I keep getting lucky. But every single time, I don't care about the result. I don't care about the paycheck. You see, I completely change the way that I think. I no longer get paid commission. I don't actually get a fee for the service. I do it out of a goodwill. I do it out of a service. I do it to help people. That's what you need to change your mindset to. You do this out of a goodwill. You're a professional trick-or-treater. You're out there literally scratching scratch tickets that are free. I do not get paid a commission. I do not get paid for the service. I do not get paid. I get paid for the nose. Rejection turns me on. Rejection amuses me. Change your mindset to I don't get paid commission anymore. I get paid for the no. I had a lady that I went 13 no's deep into, and right before she shut our door, I said, Miss, before you go, I really want to thank you for that $2,000 you just gave me. And she's like, what? I was like, no, seriously, you just gave me two grand. Because when I go to upper management and I can check you off the list as somebody that I went through the entire presentation with that didn't want to do it, that's how I get paid. I don't get paid when people say yes. I do that out of a goodwill. I do that out of a service. And I do that to help other people. You see, we should have never been called salespeople. We should have been called servants. And it's the mindset that you need to approach this game. This is just the game that I play. See, the secret is I've never had to work a day in my life. I've never had to work. The hardest work that I think I had was a senior year doing homework when I was in high school or doing these projects and stuff. That was hard work for me. Going door to door and giving people free money. That, that's not a job. Change your mindset. You're going to go exercise and make friends, right? Break it down to the ridiculous. So on the door, this is all I do. I help people relax by helping them make me, I, I help them make me like me, trust me, making it make sense. Trust is the only objection that we face. It's the only objection that you face is trust. And I have a line for that. You know, Sir, it's like having a cell phone with no service. All I can really do is play games. I'm not here to play games, so level with me. How much of what I said do you actually believe? Mirror and match. Demeanor. This is going to happen with or without you. On Sunday, I'm dropping a close on my YouTube, 
He was an engineer. It was probably one of the most technical closes that I've had. He asked me every single question on the book, told me he was not signing anything, told me he was not making a decision today, told me he was going to get 10 other quotes. But after soft closing him 19 times, going up into his attic, walking to the back of his home, secondary question closing him, you know, when we do your installation, uh, it'll definitely be done on a weekday. They'll show up in the morning. By the way, would you want the inverter placed on the inside or the outside of the garage here? You see, I soft closed him 19 times that when it came down to the final close, my final close is not complicated. It's simple. It's okay. The next step, I just have to verify you're on the deed of the home. You're not a wanted burglar. You haven't killed anybody. You don't have any arrest warrants out in North Dakota or Iowa or anything like that. Okay, great. Um, we are also going to verify you have decent credit. You haven't went through any bankruptcies or anything like that. What is the correct spelling of your last name? What have they given me the, la the spelling of their last name if they don't want to move forward? I'm the assistant buyer. I need to take their hand and lead them through the process. It's your decision to help get them involved. You're not selling anybody. You're not, they're not getting sold. You're helping them get involved. You're helping them acquire. You're in the business of service. And you have to take it personal. Like go out there today and say, hey, I'm going to create a relationship that I'm going to actually last for 25 years, 30 years. I'm going to create a relationship. I'm going to create a franchise. For all of you individuals that have hundreds of solar installations, you can be driving around 10, 15 years with your kids in your back of your car and say, daddy did that one. Daddy did that one. You're setting up franchises. And if you can utilize those franchises and set them up the right way, those people are going to remember you. Those people are going to refer you to other people. We refer to it as referral orchards. So cut to the chase. Before I used to say, hey, you know, you know, sorry, I'm late. Didn't want to do two more. My name is Taylor McCarthy. I'll pretty much just cut to the chase with you. Now I say, hey, I'll pretty much just cut to the chase and give you the short version. I add a few extra words, but I have full attention. Right. They're not like, oh, what's this kid talking about? Hey, I'll cut to the chase and I'll just give you the short version. You know how you have FPL here for the electricity? Great. I don't know if you know. And then I'm putting something in their hand. People are learning by hearing me, reading, talking, hearing, reading, writing, and saying. Those are the ways that people learn. It's not just by hearing you. Now, if you tend to sound like every other door to door salesperson, if you tend to sound like every other solar person, People tend not to listen. But if I can sound a little bit different and help them think a little bit different, they're going to say, wow, I never thought about it that way. That does make sense. It's the powers of the thoughts. You see, the reason why I'm so good at door-to-door -door sales is because of my mind. It's because of this computer up here. The things I think about create words that come out of my mouth. Those words create an emotion. The emotion creates a feeling. The feeling creates a judgment. The judgment creates a decision. Well, if I can control my own thoughts, words, emotions, feelings, judgments, and decisions, really all that sales is, this is what sales is broken down to the ridiculous. Communication and persuasion. Communication and persuasion are two complete opposites. Communication, how I can make them feel. Persuasion is asking the right questions to solve their problems. People think persuasion is bad. No, it's asking the right questions to solve these families' problems. So I cut to the chase. I'm super clear. I'm very repetitive. People have to hear, read, write, and say something six times to gain 62% of their attention. And then I'm always trying to personalize the situation. The quicker that I can personalize the situation, the better. One thing that I notice that the average salesperson does not do is they don't use references within the first 10 to 15 seconds. If I can utilize references, then I can build trust. Hey, I don't know if you know Judy, she's the firefighter, or George, he got involved with the program about a year ago. He's got the three little chihuahuas. Their name's like Jose, Pedro, and I forget the other one's name, but he was really friendly. And then George lives in the yellow house right over here. Um, he was a little dramatic, but what he told me was, and I'm utilizing those references right off the bat to be able to gain that trust and that credibility and personalizing the situation as fast as I can.
Self-talk, affirmation. This is the first step of me being able to create the decision, which is otherwise known as closing. Closing equals creating the decision. Affirmation, just like I said, thoughts, words, emotion, feeling, judgment, decision. Affirmation allows me to control my attitude, belief, and conviction. The salesman with attitude, belief, and conviction will trump the guy that's just logical. A salesman is first off a man that can sell himself to himself. He has an absolute catching belief about himself, his product, his service, his company. He cannot be wavered because he has that absolute certainty. My absolute certainty is I have a competitive advantage. We compete against America's last monopoly. If you don't think the utility company is corrupt, you need to go back and to train. It's like the weight room for the heavyweight athlete, right? The athlete, all these professionals. Talk about the professionals, the lawyers, the doctors, the dentists, the athletes. You combine all of them and put them up against the sales professionals. Sales professionals out there and all of them. But there's sacrifice that's involved. What's crazy about the sales professionals, we're handed our professional contract right away. We didn't have to spend decades in the gym, years passing the bar exam, years in college to be an intern to make minimum wage. You have the opportunity of a lifetime in front of you. And the problem is a lot of people are being selfish with that. And probably not a lot of people on this call because you're here because you want to be here. You're golden door winners. You're individuals that lead your organization. But attending something like this is you learn it and then you teach it. You program the information into your mind and then you pass it along. See, the first time you hear it, you're just exposed to the information. You're not actually programming it. The way you program is you MPDR. You memorize it, you practice it, you drill it, and you rehearse it. So self-talk, right? This is a done deal. They were already talking about it. One that I love to say, like right as I'm about to knock or ring the doorbell, as I'm looking at the map on where the panels would go, I start envisioning where the panels would go. And I tell myself, this would be ridiculous ridiculous for them not to do it they're deaf this would be so ridiculous like this is a perfect situation it would be ridiculous for them to say no and then they open the door and then the words come out of my mouth and then the emotion the feeling the judgment and decision teleports out of my body and they start to think something they start to speak they have an emotion they have a feeling they judge me my product my service and they make a decision like i said before closing is creating the decision. That's really all that it is. So after I affirm myself, this is a done deal. They've already talked about it. It would be ridiculous for them not to do it. Who I am. Hey, sir, my name is Taylor McCarthy. Right? If you have a state license, throw that in their face right off the bat. We are licensed through the state of Florida. We are licensed through the town of Reno. Put that in their face and then go to your references. Utilize the soft question. I don't know if you know. I always focus on clarity and tonality. I like to speak a little bit louder to really grasp someone's attention, kind of like what I'm doing right now. You see, sometimes you might not react to the words that I say, but you would react to the range, the volume, the pace, and the diction. See, that's what communication is. Breaking it down, if I got onto this call and I said, how many of you guys work in sales and nobody raised their hand, I can teach you communication and persuasion. But if I said, hey, we're going to have a sales talk, nobody's going to listen. Communication, how I can make them feel. Persuasion, asking the right questions to solve people's problems. What can I do for you? So why you're there. It is imperative to tell them the reason why you're there while maintaining curiosity. Two of my favorite books, I have them right back here is Curious George and Green Eggs and Ham by Dr. Seuss. I actually carry, you want, it, you want a little secret? Go buy the hard copy book, Dr. Seuss, Green Eggs and Ham, put it in your binder and use it as a slick. Right as the last ditch effort, sometimes I say, sir, have you ever heard of who Dr. Seuss is? Here, let me turn to page 14 for you, right? He said no 25 times. But then he decided to try it and he realized it was a better situation. 
So to kind of like help me understand, what is the main reason why you would want to justify paying more to the electric company? I'm finding the excuses for them to say yes. That's all I do. Hey, it looks like your series. The families up. that we serve are going to I don't know. have tactics. They're going to have a technique to give you the excuse to say no every single time. That's what their tactic is. An objection is a tactic used by the buyer to prolong or stall the decision. I'm going to repeat that. An objection is a tactic used by the buyer to prolong or stall the final decision. The same way I have tactics, the same way I have technique, they have tactics, they have techniques. If my tactics are sound, they can't fight me. If their tactics are sound, I can't fight them. So the reason I'm calling Bosnick a little bit different, I'll pretty much just cut to the chase and give you the short version. You know how you have blank here for the electricity, right? It gives me a chance to get further in the presentation. Then I'm putting something into their hand and I'm saying, I don't know if you know, and that's the soft question. I need to create imagery in their mind. I don't know if you know. I don't know if you know what's going on in the state. I don't know if you guys remember last year on the ballot. I don't know if you guys noticed the drones flying over the homes. I don't know if you guys remember getting this paper from the utility company. The more personalized and relevant the, the, the story is, the more curiosity you're going to build. How do you create that story? Go to the town that you're working. Go to Google. Type in the town that you're working and go to most recent news. Then go to the town and then pre add the utility company, most recent news. It might have nothing to do with solar, but if it's something that happened three days ago and I can create curiosity in the first 15, 20 seconds of my presentation, now they're actually listening. It's not one ear out the other one. That's when we go back to the communication. I'm engaging and I'm piquing their interest. I want to pull them out and completely break the occupation. Then we tell the story, right? These are all the different stories that you guys can tell. Doesn't matter what the story is, what industry that you're in, but that story has to be relevant to the location and the time. Then I create the problem. If there's no pain, there's no change. No pain, no change. It is serious. We're not trying to come down on anybody. However, it is important. Being able to utilize these lines. The way that I analogize this is every single family that you're going to knock on their door, most of the time the utility bills on auto pay. They don't even look at it. They know that it's there. They deal with it because there's no other option. Most of the time, the $150, $200, $300 that they're paying for your utility bill is not taking food off their table, so it's not a big deal. It's similar to having a pebble in your shoe. We've all walked and had a little pebble in our shoe and said, screw it, I'm not untying my shoe, dumping out my pebble, and then I'm going to put my shoe on and tie my shoe back up. It's, just, it's not worth it. It's just like, whatever, it's a pebble in my shoe, I'm going to continue to walk with it. But if I realized that I had a shard of a Bud Light bottle in my foot and it started to cut my foot, I'm not taking one more step. I'm stopping, I'm untying my shoe, I'm dumping out the glass shard, and then I'm fixing the problem. And the way that you turn a pebble into a glass shard is the way that you communicate, creating the sense of urgency, my voice, my voice inflection, the tonality, the conviction having an absolute certainty that you're helping somebody, right? Our job starts when they say no. You're not a tour guide. You're not an order taker, right? There's so many times where they've told me no, like 15 times. And by the end of it, they're like, I would never go back to the utility company. I'd take out my AK-47, right? Because that's what my job is. My job is to turn the no into a yes. Their excuse to say no is going to eventually turn into an excuse to say yes. So these are all the different ways that you can create the story and create a pain. America's last monopoly. But going back to it, you have to understand the utility companies are corrupt. They are corrupt. I worked in solar starting in 2013, and it was in Massachusetts and New Hampshire. 
And last year, New Hampshire and Massachusetts had like an 80% increase on their cost per kilowatt overnight. Winter price, summer price, winter price, summer price. From 2013 to where prices are now, prices have literally quadrupled, tripled, quadrupled. Imagine if I had that sense of urgency in 2014 to say, dude, I guarantee you over the course of the next seven or eight years, your prices are going to quadruple. And they did. So what do you think is going to happen in states like Florida, states like that pay 15, 14, 17 cents a kilowatt, where other states are already 30, 40, 50, 60? Their prices are going to double, triple, quadruple, whether you like it or not. It's just, do you have that attitude, belief, and conviction? Do you shine with that conviction that you can look somebody square in the eye and say, if I go through this process with you, you would do it? There's no way I can hurt your situation. All I'm going to do is put a line down the middle of a piece of paper. I'm going to show you what your situation would be at the mercy of the power company doting to the utility company compared to taking all that money and putting it into a piggy bank. The hardest part of my job is timing. I'm just really looking for the time when we both have it. Like I mentioned, your design's already about 92% of the way complete. We already had the imagery done where you get most of the sun in the backside of the home. All I really need to know is roughly like ballpark. I don't need to know the exact amount, but if I was Bob Barker and you were on the show Price is Right, and the question was, what do you think the average amount that you've paid to the utility company over the last 12 months is? What do you think that number would be? And they tell me that number and I start paper closing on the door. I literally have a piece of paper. I'm like, okay, $220, $2,600 in a year. Now, if $2,600 is what you donate to the utility company in one year, what does the number $26,000 represent to you? I'm paper closing them on the door. I used to do this when I was 18 years old selling TV, phone, and internet. If they are not stopping you, they want to move forward. I need to find that excuse to say yes. Cool. Yeah, George, my lead engineer is going to get us that last 8% of the design ready in about five minutes. I'm going to be able to show you where the panels would be laid out and then what your bill would have been last month. If there's a small corner of a table, I go through these questions. They're called, can we pay questions? Do you need me to take off my shoes? Right. And then I'm transitioning. This is all I do during my sales presentation. I communicate, I persuade, I go back to communicate, I go to persuade, I go back to communicate, I go to persuade, I go back to communicate, I go back to persuade the entire time. Oh, where are you guys from originally? Nice, cool, blah, 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 blah. Oh, like I was saying, then I go into it. Oh, yeah. Then I'm talking about their life. Hey, like I said, and then I'm going back into persuasion. And they're reacting to the range, the volume, the pace, the diction, and my certainty. If you don't have absolute certainty that you're helping people get into the best situation with the best company, with the best service, with the best product, they will read that and they will realize it's not the best situation. Then I go into the solution. After presenting a problem, I provide a solution, right? We're just redirecting, diverting or shifting the liability into an asset, going from a consumer to a producer, going from renting to owning. And I use hands to be able to show them each situation. Sun goes up, bills go down, right? The meter would actually start spinning in an opposite direction. Ultimately, we're just proposing the idea to use your roof as a power plant where you produce power on site and you're no longer at the mercy of the power company. You're just redirecting the liability into an asset, right? The solution needs to be the medicine, but it cannot be synthetic. They need to authentically know that you care and are trying to help these people. Right? They're just donating their money to the utility company. High downs, a question at the end of a sentence that demands a yes, isn't it? Couldn't it? Wouldn't it? Shouldn't it? Don't you? All those words, takeaways. Right? If it doesn't make sense, just stay with Duke. Like I use that one all the time. Like, What was the main reason that you guys picked Duke, though? Wait a second. You weren't thinking about closing out the account, right? You see, if your tactics are sound, they can't fight you. After I tell the solution and the story, then I tell them how they're involved. We must personalize how they're involved. So how you'd be potentially involved is having the ability to redirect your cost or liability into an asset where you now control comfort, price, and inflation. Between the state of this, our company, 
And, uh, you know, we're covering all the upfront costs. But before we pick your home, we go over a series of seven questions. I use a lot of hypothetical questions. Hypothetically, if I snap my fingers and there were solar panels on the roof of your car and you never had to charge it or never had to go to the gas station ever again, and you could drive from here to California without paying a penny, what would you say? Hypothetically, if the panels were on the roof and I try to convince you to rip it off and go back to the utility company and start uh, going back to renting, what would you say? Hypothetically, if you guys uh, you know, were a tenant of a landlord and the landlord continued to raise your rate, even though there wasn't anything that he, he just said, hey, the rent's going up an extra hundred bucks. Hey, the rent's going up an extra hundred bucks. What would you do? See, these are the questions that I get people to start thinking differently. Then I explain how they're rewarded. The way you're rewarded is eliminating all the nasty fees and surcharges and actually turning that liability into an asset and actually owning your power. Then why this makes sense. Bottom line, you're gonna fall into one or two categories. Category one, everything that I just said makes complete and total sense. You know, somebody that's benefited from going solar or category two, it just sounds way too good to be true. And you're probably sitting there like, wait a second, what's the catch? The catch is simple. Why did you pick FPL in the first place? Oh, well, we never had a second option. Exactly. So hypothetically, if you pulled out to US 41 and there was a big billboard on the side of the road and it was lit up with neon lights and it said that a new utility company opened up in Ocala and you would no longer be at the mercy of all these rate increases, what would you say? See, I've got way too many excuses for the families to do it. And if they don't do it, the only way they're not doing it is they want to justify a way to pay more for their electricity. But there's psychology behind yes, and there's psychology behind no. So we need to understand these things. Greatest enemy is the client's fear. We have to help them relax. Then I reflex, I transition, I assume, and I close. Composure, composure, composure. The number one thing I think sales trainers don't talk about and how important composure is when you're sitting at a kitchen table, how important composure is when you deal with objections, they, they want to do it. You've already gotten this far into the process with them. If the situation was they had solar and you were sitting there saying like, hey, I got this great idea, let's rip off the panels and you can come back to the utility company and we'll only raise the rate a couple of times and you, your, your bill is going to be higher right off the bat, conversation's not going that far. So I need to assume the sale. I know that I need to take their hand as the assistant buyer and I need to lead them through the process, right? Using reflex questions. And understand you can't reflex any of these ideas. You can only reflex the words. So it's up to you guys to watch this recording 17 times. And as you watch it 17 times, you're gonna say, wow, now I picked up something else. Nice, now I picked up something else. Let me add it to my bag. All I do is two things. I show you what the bill last month would have been if you already had solar and exactly what your roof would have looked like with the actual panels laid out. I go over a series of seven questions. If there's a small corner of the table, I'll show you how this works. Be the assistant buyer, simple. Last step for setters that they don't do is they do not rebuild the rapport. Oh yeah, yeah, come back tomorrow at seven o'clock. All right, great, see ya. Nope. They tell me to come back tomorrow at seven o'clock. I'm spending an extra five minutes building rapport with them, talking to them about the Vegas Knights. Dude, they scored nine goals last night. That was ridiculous. That's crazy. Kachuk, the hockey player for the Panthers, he played with a broken sternum last night. But dude, that's big for the Knights. I got to say, though, man, just because um, I don't know if you heard my accent, but you got a pocket car over here in the yard. If my Boston Bruins were in there, Vegas Knights would not have had that ship. I'll let you know that that much. But, you know, you got us this year. Maybe we'll see you next year. Um, but, well, yeah, um, your, your name was George, right? George, nice to meet you, right? That extra 15 seconds, three-minute conversation is the difference between them actually giving a shit about sitting with you and then being like, oh, yeah, he talked to me about the Golden Knights for the last couple minutes. People will forget what you said. They will forget how you said it. But people will never forget how you made them feel. They won't forget how you make them feel. And this is how you get the set to stick. You find the common ground. You become a friend. You don't become the solar guy. I have to become Taylor by the end of it. 
And if I can become Taylor at the end of it, you know, that's how I'm going to actually create the decision. So as you guys know, it's an art and a science. You get better or worse. I refer to this as the continuous journey. A lot of the time you can't like, it's not about the result. It's about the journey. You have to fall in love with this journey. And it's the continuous journey towards a predetermined worthwhile goals. So that's how Tom Hopkins defines success. My main objection when I sell is to create that curiosity. Likeable, trustworthy, make it make sense. A confused mind always says no. If they're not curious, they're not interested. Definition of closing is blending the sincere desire to serve, helping make decisions that are truly good for them, culminating in a win-win final decision. It's not to the customer, it's for the customer. Sometimes as the professional, we have to look at ourselves like the assistant buyer and help them rationalize the decision. People buy emotionally and they back it up with logic. I have a one-liner for that too. So we can take all the emotion out of this. And if it was something logical, it would probably be something you'd be open to, wouldn't it? Right, tie them down at the end. Question at the end of a sentence that demands a yes. So I want to go quick through this. Five steps of learning this stuff is you're aware and alert. You're programming right now. You're hearing me. You're writing. You're reading on the screen. And, you know, you actually can say these things out loud as you learn. You have to hear, read, write, and say something six times to gain 62% of the retention. You have to utilize consciously making yourself use the techniques. Remember, you can't reflex the idea, but you can reflex the words. You internalize when the techniques and strategies are transferred to my product, then they become a natural part of me. I don't even think anymore. It just comes out because I've done it so many times. And then you have to reinforce. If I decide to take a couple of weeks off the doors and then I get back out there, I'm not as good as I was before I took the couple of weeks off. I need to rebuild that muscle the same way you would in the gym. And then we've already went over this. This one's really important. This one's huge, actually. So many times when I was 18, 17, 19, you know, maintain an even keel. Don't let the highs get too high. Don't let the lows get too low. When you get frustrated and you let that dwell, you are going to quit, get mad, or get worse. Every time I get frustrated now, I say, how can I be creative in this situation? That's how you get better. I've been dealing with trying to get a Chinese visa, which is like one of the craziest challenges I've ever had to do. Like you got to like, get this whole thing in Chinese. I don't speak a lick of Chinese. And now I'm like trying to get this Chinese visa, which I finally, finally got it figured out. But I mean, it was an absolute shit show. Excuse my language. But, you know, if I was dwelling saying, oh, this is terrible, blah, blah, blah. I said, hey, how can I be creative in this situation? Some do, some don't. So what? First comes the action, then comes the motivation. You see, it's a lot easier to act and then decide to feel than wanting to like feel like doing something and then deciding to act. That's another nugget. It's easier to act and then decide to feel than waiting to feel and then deciding to act. He who angers me controls me. Something I say to myself every day and sales are easy, right? I'm just trick-or-treating for free money. So the psychology of yes, you are the representation for the way the buyer feels about your product and service. It's not what I say, it's how I make them feel. E, energy. Prospects say yes based more on your attitude, belief, and conviction than the product knowledge and technical skills. Enthusiasm, I like to refer to as the spirit you have within. Enthusiasm is 51% of the sales process. Enthusiasm is 51% of the sales process. And then service. You are the product and service, your energy and enthusiasm and your willingness to serve. That's the psychology behind why somebody says yes. The psychology of why people say no is confusion. A confused mind always says no. A lot of the time when somebody's struggling, the first piece of advice I give them, especially after listening to so many presentations from so many door-to-door -door sales professionals, it's bro, slow it down 10%. You're speaking just a little bit too fast. Just slow it down just a little bit and raise your voice. If you think you're talking loud enough, you probably need to be talking a little more loud. Because the louder I speak, the more clear I can actually concise my words to the families that I'm serving. It's 
the clarity, the voice inflection, and the tonality. Second reason why somebody's going to say no is lingering questions, right? They might think, oh, what happens if I move? That's why we have the six main question slick. What happens to my roof? What happens if I move? Bottom line, what's the cost? Who services and when do I start saving money and who owns this thing, right? If I bring that up beforehand, they don't have lingering questions. Third reason, inadequate explanation of benefits. I think the number one thing people struggle with is they don't know how to position the value. And if you don't explain the benefits the way they need to be explained, the pebble in the shoe is going to stay there and it's never going to turn into a glass shard. Timing is the hardest part of our job as a sales professional. And then hidden questions, right? Sometimes they're not going to reveal every situation that they have. That's why I love the line level with me. How much of what I said do you actually believe? Or sir, you obviously have a reason for saying that. Would you mind sharing it with me? More discovery and no, not you. There's so many times where I've taken people so far through the process and I didn't get the transaction, but instead of hanging my head, like I said, a salesman is first off a man that can sell himself to himself. Problem with that instruction is you're kicking over the furniture in your reception area. You're like, oh dude, this bad turf, this, that, that. And you know, ultimately like it's, you're beating yourself up. I'm like, bro, that was pretty cool. I took him like pretty far through the process. He told me no 19 times and now he's more interested, right? He's going to do it. Just the timing wasn't right. And the last thing I want to share with you is something that uh, we just went over at our Tennessee cabin retreat, you know, and then I want to kind of go into questions. So the, the, the ABCs of a successful career, we've all learned our ABCs when we were kids. And this is the breakdown of really what the ABCs are for a successful career in selling. It starts with your attitude. You know, there's been always a point in probably everyone's life where you wanted to make somebody proud. And for me, it was always watching my family struggle. We lived in an apartment. My family didn't even own a house. When I was 18 years old, I was the top salesman at a company called 2020 Communications selling Verizon Fios. And I bought my dad an HDTV on Father's Day. And I was on the front page of this newsletter. Now I've been able to buy my dad his own house. I paid it off cash. Because you need to make somebody proud. And it's that attitude that we take. It begins with the ability to handle failure and rejection. I never see failure as failure, but only as the game I must play to win. I never see failure as failure, but only as a learning experience. I never see failure as failure but only a chance to develop my sense of humor. Like I said, rejection turns me on. Rejection amuses me. How do we handle failure and rejection? Go back to that mindset. Dude, from this point forward, I don't make money on sales. I don't get commission. I do that out of a goodwill. I do that out of a service. I do that to help people. What I do get paid on is the ability to help people. And what I do get paid on is when people say no. B stands for balance, total fulfillment in all areas, financial, emotional, physical, spiritual. C stands for confidence, act it and you become it. D stands for discipline, desire without discipline leads to disappointment, disillusionment and depression. You see, if you have this deep down ardent burning desire, why and who you're doing it for, that desire is going to lead to you having the discipline. If you have the discipline, it will allow you to go out and demonstrate. When you demonstrate something enough, you start to document it where you have a story. Nobody wants to be recruited. Nobody wants to be managed. People want to be impressed. And to impress other people, you have to be impressive. When you document it, then you start duplicating. When you duplicate something enough, then you eventually disappear and you go to the top of the food chain again and you go through that cycle. I had the deep down desire. It created the discipline. It allowed me to demonstrate. I went out and I documented, I duplicated and I disappeared. Affirmation without discipline equals delusion. Desire without discipline leads to disappointment, disillusionment and depression. E stands for enthusiasm. Like I mentioned, it's 51% of the sale, 
IASM, I am sold myself. F stands for flexible. Anything is feasible if you are always flexible. Being flexible with our time, being a chameleon, being able to adapt in different situations. G stands for goals. Short-term and long-term must be believable and worth committing to. It's not the setting goals that matters. It's the achievement of them that matters. 95% of people are non-achievers. And it's funny because in the book, Outwitting the Devil, he says, the devil occupies 98% of people's minds with blank space. I've always said there's three people you need to find. Somebody you want to emulate, somebody you want to compete with, and then somebody that you're mentoring. A lot of the time, the person you're competing with isn't another individual, which I always thought it was. A lot of the time, the person you're competing with is the devil, occupying the blank space in your mind to take you off the course that you're supposed to be on. Finding that person you want to emulate, having mentors, and one of the most important person is somebody that you're mentoring. You guys have all taken new people on the doors with you where it's their first day shadowing. And why is it that you always sell better? It's because IASM, you were sold yourself. You were telling them how the job works and then you go out and you prove it. H, health. To get rich and sick is stupid. I is integrity. Always questioning yourself to put people into better situations. J, just for today, you live in the present moment, burn the past, don't worry about the future. The past is like a, a pot of ashes. When you procrastinate, you ruin your future, you avoid the present, and you live in the past. When you procrastinate, you're ruining your future, you're avoiding the present, and you're living in the past. K stands for knowledge. Is power when you properly apply it. L stands for laughter. It's like medicine to the bones. M stands for mentor. Allow yourself to be mentored and mentor others. N stands for network. With every new person you meet, you expand your company's potential client base. O stands for organized. Pay attention to the details. Q, P, P stands for persistence. Growth occurs when you find you can't go on, but no, you can't quit. Persistence. Growth occurs when you find you can't go on, but no, you can't quit. Always comes back to your why, but more importantly, your who, right? Persistence plus your who allows you to persist. Questions. If I say it, they tend to doubt it. If they say it, it's true. When I go over the can we pay questions, I'm like a police officer. Anything they said will be held against them. I write down their answers. So how would like a system like this provide you with peace of mind? Right In the past five years, has there been a product or service that has led you to be vocal about your satisfaction? Are you the type of people that if a company went above and beyond for you, would you go above and beyond for us? Right, Writing down their answers. So when I get to the final close, I say, okay, I'm going to show you how this works. And you tell me if you think it's fair. Do you have any issue with me using you as a reference? Nope. Non-disclosure. Nope. Give me the sign in the yard. Nope. Flying the drone over the home after the installation. Nope. Okay, just like you told me, this is all how it's going to benefit you. And they're like, yep. Yep. All right, so the next step is I have to verify you're on the deed of the home. You're not a wanted burglar. You haven't killed anybody. You don't have any arrest warrants out in North Dakota or Idaho or anything like that. Okay, great. Um, we're also going to verify you have decent credit. You haven't went through any bankruptcies. Not saying you would, but we've had families that try to flip the equipment on eBay. Um, you guys haven't went through any bankruptcies or anything like that? No, nah, we wouldn't fly. Oh my gosh, we don't even have an eBay account. What's the correct spelling of your last name? S P R T O, you know? So it's just like a reflex. It's I'm taking their hand as the assistant buyer and leading them through the process. R stands for relationships. Begin with rapport, develop respect, and give more service than your clients expect, and they will give your company more business. S stands for success, the continuous journey toward the achievement of predetermined worthwhile goals. T stands for time planning. I must do the most productive thing possible at every given moment. Nugget. I must do the most productive thing possible at every given moment. Program that into your mind. U stands for understanding. The first step that creates empathy and builds a long-term relationship. 
V stands for vocabulary. The words we use create thoughts and feelings that result in actions. There's nasty words, there's glamour words. Nasty words create fear, glamour words create excitement. W, work. When you combine play and work, it ends up being plork. Play the game you must play to win. I've never had to work a day in my life because I've always played. People are like, I'm going out to the trenches. I'm not going out on the trenches. I'm going to the playing field. When I was 12 years old, I used to ride my bike around my neighborhood and we used to go to the field to go play. We used to take the yellow baseball bats. We went to the hardware store. We wrapped them up with duct tape and we used tennis balls and we used to always play. That's the same thing that I do when I go to the field. I'm playing. I'm not going out to any trenches. I'm giving away thousands of dollars and I'm getting paid thousands of dollars to do that. X stands for extra. Find more creative ways to give thanks and recognition. Give way more than people expect. Y stands for why wait. Overcome procrastination by living by these three words. Do it now. And then Z, zero in with zeal. Stay focused. Keep yourself in a positive shell and unleash the champion within you. So when I say zero in and stay in that positive shell, I want you guys to all do something with me. And this was something that was taught to me by Tom Hopkins, right? How many of you guys have a four-digit code on your, on your cell phone? Mostly everybody, right? Why don't we have the four-digit code in our mind? This is what we do to go into that positive shell. Zip, zip, zip. I am now in my positive shell. So I want to do that together. I want to all do that together. Let's play the zip, zip game real quick. Zip, zip, zip. I am now in my positive shell. See, it's the power of self-talk, right? Chris Manizzi taught me this little song that I say to myself. No, 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 no. Yes. No, 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 no. Yes. It's what you program up here, guys. That's it. It's just a game that you must play to win. We never see failure as failure, but the game that we must play to win. So I know we're coming up on an hour. I wanted to thank everybody. You know, a lot of familiar faces, some new faces. Um, love what Mikey does. You know, he just brought the heat for us over in Tennessee. And, uh, you know, I really hope that what we went over today provided just a little bit of value. I know I went quick. I wanted to cover a lot with you. So it's up to you to actually watch the recording because right now you've just been exposed to the information, but it's up to you to MPDR, memorize, practice, drill, and rehearse. Thank you so much for having me, Mikey. Dude, thank you, Taylor. Everyone's clapping. Appreciate you, bro. That was, uh, dude, makes, makes me, makes me want to go knock right this very second. Uh, wow. Uh, appreciate that, dude. Yeah, dude. So, uh, we do have a little bit of time. If you have a little extra time, uh, great. If not, no worries. Um, I wanted to filter some of the questions uh, some of the guys got. I mean, I, I, honestly, that was that was way more than enough. I did not even expect that much from me, bro. Dude, that was that was a lot. Thank you. And uh, our people in this community do go back through and uh, and and use repetition to back to be able to drill this. So really appreciate you, Taylor. That was that was fire, bro. That was outstanding, dude. Thank you. All right, guys, let's uh let's open it up to some questions. So to Taylor, uh, if Taylor, if you can stick around for another five six minutes or so, that'd be awesome. Um, but let's uh let's open it up to uh let's open up to some questions. If uh if anybody wants to to hop up, uh let's see. Thomas Colby Weston Wilcox Hayden. If you guys got any questions, you guys are welcome to uh, to come up, and uh, we'll uh, we'll we'll try to respect Taylor's time and let him get back to uh, running the uh, his business. You're welcome to just unmute yourself and come up, brother. Quick question: Where can I find the uh, the the recording at? Um. So that'll be. Uh, I'll I'll get it to you. I'll, I'll text it over to you. Um. So that's for the recordings of recordings are these. Um, are, are uh, technically for all the, the guys in the mastermind. Um, so, but since you're with Knox stars, I'll make sure you get access to it. Money. Appreciate it, brother. Got you. Yeah. That was fire, dude. That was, that was unreal. I was like, Holy, I'm over here learning myself. I'm like, dude, I forget. I forget who said it. Taylor, this is a compliment, man. Uh, somebody said yesterday, 
um, this dude, Austin, he was on the call earlier. He had a bounce out cause he was getting into appointment. He said, um, he said, Taylor has forgotten about things that I haven't even learned yet. And I was like, dang, dude, let's go. Taylor has forgotten about things that I haven't even learned yet. I can't wait to be on the call tomorrow. So he was on the call earlier. I saw him on here. Um, yeah, and, and definitely you guys should check out the YouTube channel. If you guys aren't subscribed, definitely that would be a, a, a huge come up for me. Yeah, uh, but the, the next three episodes that I'm posting, I'm going to post one tomorrow night on how to manage the sales team in 2023 and leadership. Then on Sunday, I'm going to post a full transaction, the set, the close, and the physical installation, um, the raw footage. And then the week after that, it's a really technical close from an engineer asked a million questions. So I think that, you know, it's just constantly learning. Yep. I just put your, uh, I just put Taylor's, um, so do me a favor, guys, just Taylor, Taylor didn't, I, Taylor didn't uh, get paid to do this, but it, it will help. First of all, if any of you guys can show me a better sales, uh, a sales trainer than Taylor, um, I'll give you, I'll give, I'll, I'll give you five grand, dude. I, I can't find anybody that's more, uh, dude, just like diligent in his ability to understand and articulate sales to people, either a at a top level that are installing 200, 300 deals a year in solar or guys that are only start, starting out doing 20, 30 deals and even the hundred deal guys. So, um, make sure that we pay back Taylor by going and following him. First of all, on YouTube. So subscribe, turn on like the notifications buttons on Taylor just drops literally, literally is the only person that I know that goes from start to finish on the door. I only have like two of those every, every other, I have two start to start to finish of door knocking. I don't have any start to finish of closing. Taylor's the only one that I know that's on any of these platforms, even on YouTube or sales trainings that actually does start to start to finish basically first touch all the way to PTO and just documents and puts it on YouTube for us. Literally that stuff is free 99, dude. That is such gold. But the key here is that you actually watch those like Taylor taught me back in 2014, 2015, watch those while you're going to hood, watch those while you're coming home from hood, watch Taylor's closes and turn it up to one and a half speed while you're going to your next appointment. You guys have to make sure that you're, 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 um, you're intaking this, uh, the stuff that Taylor put, dude, he's literally got it all for free on YouTube, like for free. Appreciate you Taylor for doing that, dude, by the way, that is, that is something that, uh, yeah, man, I just commend you for doing that. So thank you. Thanks brother. Yeah. We need to, we need to get another hundred subscribers for Taylor. If you're not already subscribed to his Taylor McCarthy, by the way, his pictures with standing with Elon Musk, uh, on, on his YouTube. So yeah, Taylor, uh, Taylor hung out. With, funny, with funny story on that. We were, uh, there was that one of the solar city, uh, you know, parties at the end of the year and they're like, Elon's up in this special thing. You need a wristband. And it was me and two of my buddies. And I was like, I went to the guy that was guarding the door. I was like, dude, I'll give you this hundred dollar chip if you let me in. He's like, look, he's like, fuck it, I'll take it. And then my other buddy's like, yeah, can I give him a hundred? And he took a hundred. And the third kid's like, nah, I'll save my hundred dollar chip. And me and this kid, Dave, got pictures with Elon. The third kid's like, fuck, I should have given him the hundred dollar. Check, 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 check. <laughs> That's awesome, Jacob Good. Lee. I can hear you. Oh my bad. I was just making sure my mic was working, so I guess it is. You got a question for Taylor? Yes, sir. Appreciate you, Taylor, as always. Uh, I always get a ton of value out of your stuff. And uh, I had a pleasure of knocking with you a couple summers back, and uh, I think it was in New Mexico. So that was awesome. Two-part question. I'm going to get as much value as I can out of it. Um, first one is going to be very like specific to the market that I work in in Florida. I noticed that you still use the House Bill 741 slick when you're kind of approaching doors, veto, Ron DeSantis, that kind of jazz. Um, when you're doing that, since that's been a, about a year since that happened, um, I haven't used that in a while because of that. So I just wanted to get a little bit of feedback from you. What do you say whenever you're addressing the fact that it is about a year old? It does, does people ever give you pushback because of that? Um, and then the second part is going to be, we talk a lot about staying in the center, even killed. And then we also talk about positive self-talk and positive affirmation a lot as well. So for me, the part that I struggle on is um, whenever I do get into those positive, like when I need to be very positive to myself, because I've gotten so good at staying even killed, it's kind of hard to go to that high end too, where I'm kind of being deliriously positive. Like someone just said, screw you F off. 
And I'm like, you know, I love my life. I'm alive. I'm alert. I feel great. You know, saying that to yourself after someone told you to F off is very, um, doesn't align with the reality that you're feeling. So just two part question there on House Bill 741 and then staying even killed, but also positive. Yeah. So, I mean, the House Bill 741 allows me to be in an off uh, authoritative state. Like I've had people that knock on the door and look out the window and pretend they're not going to answer. And then I ring a, ring it again and I hold that up and I just hold it. And I don't say anything. And they see this house bill and they're like, what the heck? They feel like they're getting served or something. But it gives me the authoritative position. Sir, it is serious. We're not trying to come down anybody. However, it is important. I don't know if you guys knew what happened. It's easier if I show you. And then I put it in their hand. Right? I don't know if you guys were already reconciled. Um, have you? And then I turn it around. And the opposite side of that, I have the do not pay electric bill. Right. Did you guys already get your do not pay electric bill or did you guys not get that yet? <laughs> what? Right now I'm kind of creating that curiosity right off of the bat. Right. People are like, I'm not interested. Like on my last video, she's like, I'm not interested. I said, miss, do you even know what happened on Thursday? She's like, what happened on Thursday? I said, so see, now you're interested. But before you told me you weren't, um, I actually have to go over this with you because there's one technique that's more powerful than any other technique in all of selling. And that is control. When you lose control of a selling situation, you will lose the control and the command of the potential rejection, the pace. If they take the control, you're losing every single time. But there's an art behind it where I need to control the presentation, but make them feel as if they have control. Second question is, Going back to what I said, rejection turns me on. When people tell me to go fuck off, I'm like, sir, are you upset? Everyone's been like super friendly to me. Thank you. Like, thank you for treating me like a human being. Right. And then they might slam the door in my face, but I'm laughing. Right. <laughs> it doesn't make a difference. I'm never going to see those people again. I need to make sure that I keep my PMA, my positive mental attitude and protect my mindset no matter what they say to me. But I also do not let those thoughts creep into my head. It's the smallest little thought of, oh, am I going to get a sale today? Oh, I'm, it's okay if I don't get a sale. Or, oh, this is bad area. Or solar doesn't make sense because of these finance fees. Once you let the smallest thought creep into my, your mind, you need to take it out and throw it away, like physically. It's times where I have little negative thoughts coming to my mind too. And I just go like this out of here. See ya. And I, I forgot to tell you this major, major nugget, which I want to share with you guys. How many of you guys feel like, you know, a lot of the time you're in the right direction and then you veer right. off? How many of you guys feel that? Like you're, you're moving in the right direction a lot, but you veer off a little bit. You veer off. Or maybe you try to accomplish something, you get 80% done, and then you're on to something else. And then you get that 60% done, and you get something else 60% done, and nothing is 100% complete. This is the question that I started to ask myself. I said, Taylor, are you the strobe light or are you the laser beam? A strobe light blinks on and off, on and off, on and off. A laser beam is precise, constant stream. So when I notice that I'm kind of going like this, I say, Taylor, you're strobe lighting. Stop strobe lighting, become the laser beam. I literally will say it out loud and I'll refocus myself. Nope, not going to be the strobe light, going to be the laser beam. Small little affirmations like that make a huge difference for me in the way that I learn. I had a 1.8 GPA in high school, right? I had a 1.8. I didn't even qualify for state college. So I got into door-to-door -door sales when I was 18. People say, can you read the sign? It says no soliciting. Sir, I don't know how to read. That's why I do door to door. <laughs> you have to have fun with it. If you're not having fun, it's not worth it. You have to be excited about what you do. Like I said, there's been a point where somebody wanted to tell you you couldn't do it. Right? There's a lot of people that are waiting for my downfall. But guess what? That's what I use as gasoline. That's what I use as fuel. I'm going to keep on keeping on. This is the sport that I play and I love to do it. I actually use your, uh, that, uh, that, that word track that you use about the strobe light and the laser over the last two weeks since, uh, since Tennessee. 
And dude, I, I actually can track how much more I've been able to get done. Um, I've heard it now twice. I heard Ashton Buswell on our call two, three, four weeks ago say, get back to work. He has a note on his computer. So I've got a note there. And now I have a note right here that says, am I the, am I the strobe light or am I the laser? So dude, I have, I have seen the difference in my ability and uh, my efficient, my efficiency, effectiveness and production over the last two weeks, since you, you taught me that when I heard you speak in uh, Tennessee. So I appreciate it. And it, and it works. And, you know, final nugget is when you maintain anything, it'll become exhausting. Building is energizing. Well, what's the secret to building is you have to have fun. You have to be on these type of calls, having fun. If you're on this call, like, dude, I can't wait for the call to get over. Then you shouldn't even be here. You should already hop, hop off. If you're on the doors and you don't want to be out there and you're like, Oh, I'm looking forward to lunch. I'm looking forward to my car group driver picking me up. I can't wait to leave home. And you shouldn't even be out there. You need to figure out a way to have fun with this. And if you're not having fun, it's really not worth it. Appreciate that. One last, one last question really quick, Taylor. You don't got to get too far in depth in it. I think it's, it should be a fairly short, uh, a fairly short answer. Um, but we've got a, if you have a one legger, okay. Do you still take it as far as you can? And what does that look like to you? Yeah, definitely. So when I have a one legger, and I used to do the same thing with alarms is I take it as far as I possibly could. And if the fact was, is that I knew that the other decision need maker needed to be there, I would break down the pain on the left side. I would show them the picture of the design, but I would not show them any of the numbers. And I would get that one legger very excited so that when the other spouse was there, that they were already excited about the process. And now it was much more higher percentage of me closing the transaction. So there are certain questions that I'll use because a lot of the time, you know, you can still close one leggers like and get them to install a thousand percent, but you need to use, you know, certain tie downs and, you know, questions. You know, if I went through this with, you know, both of you and he was here right now. And I could break it down that I could take all the emotion out of this. And this was very logical. And I could trade that the left side was better than the right side. Would there be any reason why you would want to continue donating your money to FPL? Do you think that he would answer that any differently? And then I build the value as much as I possibly can. And then if I need to, I schedule a time to come back. That's fine. Like I said, I don't believe in one touch, two touch, three touch, four touch. I believe in always taking it as far as I possibly can. And then when that other person comes, I start from the very beginning again, and I go through the process. Like if I'm sitting there with a one-legger, this is the best line to use. When I'm sitting there with a one-legger, let's say I'm going through the process and a new person enters the situation, whether it's a the spouse or their kid or something like that, every single time when that happens, this is what you do. So let's say I'm, I'm going over with Mikey and his wife just walked in with grocery bags. Oh, hey, how's it going? Your husband just got a brand new hot tub. It's getting installed next week. <laughs> Works every time, right? Now I've completely lowered the resistance, right? Because they're thinking, what the heck, a salesman? Oh, yeah, he just bought a new hot tub. Congratulations. And I smile at them. I'm like, oh, I'm just kidding. Um, and then, you know, it's it brings down that buyer's resistance. Same thing when if I'm knocking outside and some ladies working in our garden in the front yard or somebody's in their driveway, they see you walking down the street. They're like, I hope the store door salesman doesn't talk to me. What I always do when I find somebody outside is I say, I look like I look lost and I'm like, hey, sir, do you know where Apple Road is? And Apple Road is like two streets over to the right. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's right over here. It's this one right over here. I'm like, yeah, for some reason, my GPS wouldn't download. What about First Avenue? And they're like, this is First Avenue. I'm like, oh, it is First Avenue. Oh, my name's Taylor. I must have not got a chance to speak with you yesterday. I don't know if you know Rod. He lives right here. Oh. Right now I've broken that preoccupation. These are tactics. Like it's polishing. There's ways to get better. Even if you're the person that outsells everybody else on this call, the more that you learn, the more that you know that you need to learn. Yeah. The more that you learn, the more that you know that you need to learn. You know, every time I learn a new one-liner or something, I'm like, bro, this is money. I definitely feel as if people hesitate to pay full price on things they don't need to. I definitely feel as if people want to be more economical on a bill they're never going to cancel. When you have a hundred of these one-liners, you can go to it whenever you need it in certain situations. Love that.
Dude, Taylor, that was outstanding. All right, everyone, hop, uh, put your uh, put your videos on, unmute yourselves. Let's give Taylor a huge round of applause. Appreciate it, guys. I really appreciate it. Let's go. Thanks, man. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. God bless, Taylor. We'll be in contact, man. Appreciate you, brother. Go out and crush it this. Go out and crush it today and this week. Uh, Best way that you can thank Mikey is by showing up on the scoreboard. Let's go. Let's go. Appreciate you, Taylor. Thank you. All right, guys, everyone, that was outstanding. Taylor McCarthy just dropped some freaking nuggets, dude. I have almost two and a half pages of notes on this. And, dude, I am going to implement some things right away. So uh, we'll get the uh, the recording out to you guys. It should be live by end of day today. So you guys can go back through that um, in uh, courses.mikeylucas.com. So, and then I'll have, uh, I'll have my team transcribe this video and also put in Taylor's nuggets. So uh, I'll do our, my best to have uh, maybe some screenshots uh, of Taylor's uh, items that he went over as well. So we can get those over to you guys too. So either a look for those inside the courses or B we might email those, whatever is going to be the easiest route for us to do for you guys. That way you guys can use those, uh, those slick. So um, if you guys don't have any questions or if you do great, no worries. I can stay on for a little bit longer. I've got a call here in six minutes. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's what I got for you guys today. Help, uh, everyone that was guests. I appreciate you guys all hopping on. This is, this is a golden door formula mastermind. Uh, it's a financial mastermind where I help. We, uh, what we do is we take, uh, a strategy and help everyone that's on this call to be able to make 20, 30, $40,000 a month in passive income and show you guys how to exit in seven years. So if you guys are interested in learning more about that, just make sure you reach out. And obviously everybody that's in this group, you guys can all attest that uh, it's pretty fire. And we have awesome sales dudes like Taylor McCarthy and all these other top professional Golden Door Award winners on this call. So I appreciate you guys hopping on. God bless you guys. Uh, I'll stay on for another couple of minutes if you guys got any questions. Uh, otherwise, uh, I've got some uh, some oil, gas, pipelines, and solar farms to go purchase. And uh, my partner's on the call right now. So, Thomas, Weston, you guys all good? Hayden, Coleman, any questions? Appreciate Jordan? it, Mikey. Thank yeah, you. Man. Got you, Thomas, brother. Keep crushing. Thanks, him. Mikey. Appreciate it, man. My pleasure, brother. It's money, dude. You're a legend. Appreciate Thanks, it. Thank you. Thank you, Mikey. Mikey. Yes, sir. Yes, Thank sir. You. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Awesome right on, job today, bro. Thank you, Sal. Glad to have you on, brother. Keep crushing Illinois, man. Hell yeah, we're crushing it. Get out here, man. Don't tap me with a good time. Come out here. All right, all right, all right. For real. I'll talk with Michael. I was talking with Michael. We're trying to set up our stem cells first. So let me make sure I get the stem cells in before, before I get out to Illinois and knock out there. But there, if there is any time to knock in Illinois, it's right now when it's not freaking freezing. I was out there two years ago when it was freezing, freezing cold. So. All right, boys. God bless you guys. I'm going to have to end this call. We've got another call here uh, with the American Energy Fund. God bless you guys. Big Mike Aguilar. I see you, big dog. Where are you knocking at, bro? All right, thank you. I'm um, right now. I'm in um, Washington, but I had to come back home. I have a trucking company uh, in California, so you know I'm going back and forth. But you know, just just getting in there. You know, I appreciate you guys putting all this information out there. You know, for us starting, you know, just that stepping stone. You know that you guys are up here on the hill and you guys are helping us get up there. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, Mike. I'll uh, at Lee. Make sure that I send out to all the people that that signed up for this. Make sure we send out Taylor McCarthy's and just get it approved first. But McCarthy's YouTube and my YouTube. That way we can make sure we get like guys like Mike um surrounded by the right people if they're gonna be driving or wh whatever let's get them some information about the youtube so that you guys can okay. describe the taylor stuff and my stuff it's all really really dude just you need to put the right information in first so that your expectations are correct and that the the path is the right path so you don't misstep you know in a year two years five years from now put the right information in at the beginning no for sure man appreciate that yeah man i got you brother all right y'all peace all right god bless you too you too